Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany and I'm on a mission to hit a thousand subscribers. So make sure you click that button below. In today's video, I actually thought I would go over the heck of a bill that I just received from Arcoma because they personally flew one of their techs from Miami to my physical house. So if you are interested in seeing everything I went through, because of that machine back there, then stay tuned. All right, so I actually do own the Rakoma MT-1501. I actually have had this machine, now it's probably been about four months, four months, four months I've had this machine. And basically I have been in contact with Rakoma quite a few times because if you guys seen in prior videos, I'll link them above, with my hat issues, you can see that when the image is creating, it's just not lining up. And I kept thinking, well, one, when I contacted Rakoma, they kept telling me it was my digitizer, which I'm not going to get them wrong. Yes, I um, do think a lot of it does boil down to digitizing, but I was shocked to find out there is more wrong with my machine than just that issue. All right, so... Basically, I have been in contact with Workoma, like I mentioned, quite a few times. I've done, um, the one really cool thing about their service team is they actually will video call you rather than just a typical call. I mean, granted, it does start off with a call, then typically it will turn into like a video chat so they can physically see what's going on with the machine, the issues you're having, and try to do it uh, over the phone rather than sending someone out to you. So I will definitely say I've had quite a couple calls and very lengthy calls at that with them over the phone. Um, and actually it was kind of interesting because my last one that I had, it was I was probably on the video chat with them for about two hours. Now don't get me wrong, they did make some corrections and adjustments on my machine for me. And then um, the next day I got a call basically saying that they were sending out a service tax. So I was like, okay, cool. like you know, my machine's under warranty, everything's gonna be great. They said that they were gonna send a tech that was closest to my location, which I'm near more like Orlando area. So I'm like, okay, awesome, great. Well, next thing you know, the next day, I get a call from this guy, his name is Garfield. He is phenomenal, like phenomenal. Really enjoyed having him here. He was here for probably about two hours going in full depth detail about my machine. He was actually teaching me quite a bit of things as well, which I definitely want to show um, you guys in this video, just because I personally have not seen any videos like this online. And I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Thank you so much. Because in your mind, you're like, I don't really know any other crafters, especially in this area. Uh, a lot of people are doing a lot of vinyl work, which granted, I do a lot of that as well but not so much embroidery around my area. So I really have nobody to like feed off of and get more information from. So what I think I'm doing is fine when in reality, come to find out it's not. So definitely continue to watch. I know I'm a rambler and I'm sorry about that. But anywho, um, basically I wanna kinda go over the cost because after he came out here, he was here for two hours. They flew him in from Miami. Like I mentioned, he literally was up at like 4 a.m. that morning, caught the flight, came here, grabbed the rental car, and came to my house. So he was here, I think at like 9 that morning, and basically left at almost, right, I mean, right before 12. But like I said, it was at least two, two solid good hours he was here. Um, and then basically what we ended up finding out was that my x drive was bad which basically um with a Rakoma, your machine will go front to back and then side to side so this is supposed to be your y and this is your x so my y what happened or i should say my x what was happening is once the machine is turned on the machine should not be able to turn at all well i mean you can literally grab my machine especially when it has the cap on and you can like physically turn it left to right and he's like, that shouldn't be happening. So what's happening is it's not physically like locking into place. So what's happening is once it starts to embroider, it can create a lot of jumping, which is probably why he said that I was having the issues with my hats on why when it was doing outlines, things were not lining up, which I didn't know that it couldn't shift left to right. And I mean, he 
physically proved it to me. He's like, well, watch the Y. And when he's trying to like, you know, mess with it, it's literally locked in. It's not going anywhere. So he's like, it, if it's like that this way in your Y, it should not be like that in your X. So they are in the process of actually sending me a replacement part, which should be actually arriving today. So I'll kind of film my husband installing that a little bit later and just kind of insert it in here. But um, yeah, I was just like, okay, interesting. Didn't know that that was an issue. But then also he was teaching me a lot of other things about the machine, which I was beyond grateful for. And then the um, difficult <laughs> part, part came where they sent me the bill. And um, it, it, was, it, was not a, it was not a pretty bill. I will definitely be honest with you about that. So I basically, even though they say it's under warranty. I still had to pay for the travel, his expenses. Um, it's it's kind of what I was told. And I'll just be honest with you, that cost was $577.80. And so that was a big slap in the face. And then after I paid that bill, they're like, okay, well now you have to pay for shipping so we can have the new product sent to you. And I'm like, seriously, like I have to pay for shipping? Like what the hell does the warranty even cover? And they're like, oh, well the warranty is covering the part that we're replacing. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'm sure you guys get that for next to nothing. But regardless, Brittany, don't be sour. Just be thankful. Um, then the warranty, or excuse me, for them to ship it to me, with $37.40, they told me it would be here two-day air. It's supposed to be coming FedEx and does require a signature. So I'm just kind of like in motion, just ready for this piece to get here. Because if you notice, the machine is off the wall. And I have literally have not been able to use it now for probably two weeks. So obviously, if you can only imagine, when my machine's down, that means I'm not making money. And I need to start making more money. I mean, that's the point of purchasing the machine is to grow your business. Um, like I mentioned, there's not a lot of places around me that do embroidery. So I've been pretty busy with that. Um, but what I do want to go into right now is just a few things that he did teach me. So what we're going to do is go a little bit closer to the machine. And then uh, let's teach you all the new things that Rakoma did teach me. And I do appreciate that part. I am going to try my best here. So I am directly right behind the camera. Um, there are a couple things that I do want to personally teach you guys with this machine. Um, basically, one thing he did mention is that the thread here. So here's my thread. It needs to go behind this hook. So you need to make sure that all your thread is going behind this hook. Like, um... Originally, I did I did not know you had to do that. So you have to make sure it's behind here. Obviously, you know, make it sure it's thread through the needle. And then once it's down here, you're going to hook it. Like that part I knew except right behind here. So make sure that all of these are behind this um, hook here. I don't know what they call it. So just giving you a tip there. Another thing um, I did notice that was happening when I was threading, I don't even know how to explain it, but basically um, when it was going like down in here, um, this was actually not aligned. So what was happening is when my needle was going down, sorry, I'm gonna try to reposition you. Okay, so when my needle was going down into my center, it actually was not going directly into the center. And if you can look closely, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, you can a little bit. See, there's like, it was actually hitting. So he did have to make a correction there for me. And I personally couldn't even show you how he did it. And he said, honestly, it's not something that we should be handling. It's more of a tech thing. But he did tell me to buy more of these plates because over time, um, you know, of course they can get hit. So you just need to kind of keep up with this. He said that you could easily find these on Rakoma. So I need to order those for me. Um, but going back to what I was originally talking about, basically when I was threading, um, I noticed that a lot of my thread was like bunching up. And um, I, I don't even know how to explain it. I wish I had an example, but I don't. But basically where it's like the, the thread will like thin out on me and then bunch up here. And I was like, okay, like, you know, I, I just, I honestly just 
didn't really think it was anything that I was doing, but come to find out that you actually have to make sure that your thread, or excuse me, that your uh, needle right here, like the eye of the hole of the needle is actually facing directly towards you. It cannot be side, you know, to the left or to the right. It has to be directly in front of you. So let me see if I can do this. So basically what he was showing me, which I thought was extremely helpful, is he took the Allen key, okay? He loosened it just a hair, right? So just a hair. He literally took another needle, you stick it into the center, right? So now my needle is into the center of the other needle and I want to make sure Sorry guys, I'm so close. That it is straight in front of me. Okay, so now that it is straight, I basically have to lock it back down. And he's like, you wanna make sure that every single needle is like that. Cause if it's not, you're going to get that bunching on your threading. So that was beyond helpful. And I was just astounded by knowing that simple trick. I said, I've never seen it anywhere. And he said, yeah, I know. Um, it's just, you know, over time, it's something that he's he's learned. So that was great. Okay, so another thing that I found out is that when it is embroidering an image, you should technically not have this um, once it is done. When it starts, yes, you could potentially have a little bit of excess fab um, thread, but once the image fully goes all the way through, this, should actually cut extremely clean. So what he actually was telling me is you have to mess with these dials, which of course I know that this is like resistance and things like that. But what I personally was learning with him is he likes to see it, like this was one he did, where if you can tell like that metal piece is like way down there, where um, this one is way in front. So I just showed this as an example because he went and he corrected everything. So my suggestion is honestly, guys, like work with your machine, sample with it, see what you got to do to tweak it. Um, you definitely should not be having any of that excess. So all that you want to really do, I know this is just my personal preference. Uh, this just off of kind of what I've seen with him. But as long as the metal is like pushed backwards and you don't feel it, then you should be good because look how like much deeper he made this one like rather than like that one, right? So you can definitely tell, I mean, heck, even this one probably can come out a little bit. So I noticed that he was really messing with these dials a lot while it was embroidering in order to see the excess thread from stopping, which again, I actually thought that that was normal and I can just go in. I think you guys seen in prior videos where I was just snipping them away and like, um, I, um, using the lighter and he was like yeah like I understand you can do that like it's definitely need it sometimes but not as much as I was doing so that was another huge like experience eye-opener that I was not aware of that I should not have been running into all right so you see how the machine is locked and it's not allowing me to move it at all this is my Y but look my X it's very loose and he said that you shouldn't be able to do this. Now, my machine is on, but if I shut it off, you see I can now move my Y, right? So that is normal is what he's telling me. So that is why we are actually going into the back and we are basically going to be replacing this um, board. So he did say it was, um, a technical issue so all that we have to do is just basically swap this out and um, we will do that now
Okay, so another thing that he did teach me, I know it's going to be a little hard because I actually don't physically have a hat on here, but one thing he did advise me, again, I did not know, that if I was to go here, I'm sorry, you, you can definitely see my ring light. So if you go here, right, and let's say I have my cap setting on, we're going to go ahead, we're going to get my hat set up, right? So this should be flush. This was another huge correction that they were making. Basically, these brackets right here on both sides were coming out like no joke this far. And that is pretty lengthy. So they had to change the setting to push this back so this should literally be flush like this. Another thing um, Garfield did teach me was that um, he highly recommended that I... Um, what was it? Oh, this is what it was. Sorry, my brain is like half awake right now. He did recommend before I put the hat on to go ahead and, um, I can't even think of the word, like map it out. I, I know that's not the right word because apparently my brain's not working, right? We're going to hit yes. And he's like, allow it to do its thing, right? And then he's like, go ahead, put your hat on. Right? And then if you have to center it, obviously you're just going left to right. And then what he actually advised me to do is every single time I remove the now completed hat and put on a new hat, if I do not recenter it, right, all I'm doing is again moving left to right with now, let's say, another new hat, it's actually always going to create the image at the exact same spot every single time which I thought I had to uh, map it out every single time. I thought I literally had to do this every single hat. And he's like, no, don't do that. And the reason why is because um, you want the hat to position on the hat the same spot every single time. So every time you're, you know, remapping it out, that's what it's doing. So don't do it. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. I thought that that was another great example of something he taught me. All right, now that we finally have my new machine, I shouldn't say new, but I mean, it's new to me. <laughs> now that it's actually been replaced, I'm really hoping that everything starts kind of like flowing into place. I now can get more orders coming in and now it's time to make that money. So if you guys have learned anything in this video, please let me know below. I really think that this was an extremely helpful video. I know I don't have like thousands of uh, cameras and like, you know, lighting and I I'm, I'm not like the greatest at that part of it, but I definitely am just trying to get my information across to you guys so you don't get stuck with this ridiculous gnarly bill. Um, so if you do experience any issues with your Rokoma machine, like I was, definitely don't think that you're crazy. Definitely give them a call. Let them walk you through it. They are beyond helpful. I mean, I'm definitely not complaining at all with their service and their top notch and everything there. I'm strictly just complaining about the fact that I had to pay more money. <laughs> That's about it. But I highly do recommend giving them a call if you do have any issues. Of course, if you do want to check out the Rakoma MT-1501, that's just the one single header. They do have multiple headers. They do have smaller machines. Definitely, you know, I mean, of course, you are paying, honestly, for not only the quality of the machine, but the quality of the service. Because we were also looking at maybe picking up a second machine, but it was coming from China. And my fear of that honestly like yeah that would be really cool content video for youtube but i have a feeling a, a lot of it is just um like learning yourself and they do not have the support team behind them quite like this company so unfortunately sometimes you do have to spend that money in order to get that quality and service so i do still recommend them it's just unfortunately i did have some bumps in the road which created a little bit of a frustration um with not being like stoked about it but again we're we're now past that let's keep sailing like I said it was only four months of frustration but at least we are now at the end road I mean it could have been longer so um hopefully you guys did find this video helpful if you do have uh anything you want to let me know please leave comments below I do appreciate it and do remember to subscribe to the channel I am trying to put out a video at least once a week mostly focus on crafting and then I am going to dabble a little bit of of just personal stuff here and there just because personally when I'm watching these videos I, I kind of like to see what they do outside that craft room but that's just me personally so hopefully you guys will like that content creation as well so uh, yeah just stay tuned and I do appreciate you guys watching bye everyone <laughs>